can now confirm that we have credible whistleblower testimony alleging misconduct and government abuse that is resulting in preferential treatment for the president's son, Hunter Biden. These are not serious people. Yesterday, you censure the former chair of the House Intelligence Committee. Tomorrow, you perhaps want to defund the Department of Justice and the FBI based on some conspiracy theory. Let's bring in our panel, Leslie Marshall, Democratic strategist, Byron York, chief political correspondent of the Washington Examiner, Morgan Ortega, former State Department spokesperson. Welcome to you all. Thank you for joining us. I want to play one more quick sound, but if I can, Morgan, of Jason Smith, the congressman, who's talking about David Weiss being denied uh, the ability to bring charges against Hunter Biden, and I'll get your response. Watch. Testimony shows that U.S. Attorney of Delaware David Weiss tried to bring charges in the District of Columbia around March of 2022 and was denied. Weiss sought special counsel status from the DOJ in the spring of 2022 and was once again denied. U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland told Congress that Weiss had all the authority necessary to pursue the charges. Well, which is it? I think it's a fair question, Morgan. Which is it? You can't bring charges in D.C. and California, but Merrick Garland said, look, it, it, you take the ball and run with it. Yeah, and when you look at this entire case that the House GOP are investigating and, and you look at, at the way in which uh, the Democrats are going after these IRS whistleblowers, for example, you know, everybody loves a whistleblower until it happens to be one that's going against your own party. Uh, I think it's easy to, to get all of these cases confused. And I think what's important for the American people to know is that the House GOP will investigate this. I, I got to tell you, listening to the testimony today, reading the text messages from Hunter Biden uh, to uh, the business businessman in China that he was that he was in a business deal with where he got mm -hmm. at least five million dollars from him. This is someone who's a member of the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, he threatened this person saying his father, Joe Biden, the president, was sitting next to him uh, and that they needed to respond with the money that had been promised. I mean, this kind of stuff is chilling and it makes the average American look at this and say, well, why couldn't this be investigated? You also look at someone like Kodak Black, who got 46 months in prison. This is a pretty famous rapper for the right. same charges as Hunter Biden. So this is why this is being investigated. It's not a conspiracy theory, and it needs to continue to be investigated because there's a lot of stuff that is way worse than anything that was ever alleged of the, hun of the Trump children yeah. coming out of Hunter Biden. Although critics are saying Kodak Black had a very long rap sheet, and so that might have played into it at all. I want to play the pushback, if I can, Byron, from the DOJ. They're responding to Republicans saying, quote here, as both the Attorney General and U.S. Attorney David Weiss have said, U.S. Attorney Weiss has full authority over this matter, including responsibility for deciding where, when, and whether to file charges as he deems appropriate. He needs no further approval to do so. Questions about his investigation should be directed to the U.S. Attorney's Office for Delaware. And what they're saying is, look, he's, he's got the right to do what he wants. And if you want any more questions, talk to them. And we do need to hear from him. I think there's no doubt about it. This was a really, really big day in the Hunter Biden uh, investigation. Mm -hmm. Obviously, a couple of days ago, we had the indictment, which seemed like uh, a real slap on the wrist to a lot of Republicans. Now we learn from IRS whistleblowers that the IRS wanted to charge Hunter Biden with felonies, and their recommendation went over to the Justice Department, came out as a couple of misdemeanors. Then we did hear about David Weiss wanting to uh, charge Hunter Biden in the District of Columbia and in California, uh, but being denied that. And then finally, that WhatsApp message. Now, the, the, the committee said this is unverified, so we shouldn't get mm -hmm. super excited about it. But the one WhatsApp message really points to knowledge of what's going on by President Joe Biden, which, if you remember, Republican investigators have always said this is a Joe Biden investigation, not a Hunter Biden investigation. Yeah, and Byron makes a good point, Leslie, because if this is verified and, you know, some of this stuff seems to be verifiable, uh, it's a hit. It's a hit to this whole Hunter Biden investigation.
It is if it's a verifiable. I can't stand when we talk about ifs. I mean, we can't talk about ifs. We have to have substantial information. You have a whistleblower still working at the IRS who has testified but refuses to speak publicly. That makes me a bit perplexed. And going back to what Byron said, when you talk about people who wanted to bring felonies against this, I have spoken since the decision was down on my radio show to a number of IRS attorneys who said it's very uncommon to have felonies against people who don't pay taxes, admit to paying taxes after the effect, because they said if they were to prosecute all the jails would be full mm. because there are so many people that don't uh, pay their taxes. There's also the diversion program. We have to remember that Hunter Biden, even though he's in recovery, he was mm. uh, an addict. And the diversion program is specifically set up for people who were addicts. So, you know, this is, I know people say it's preferential treatment. That is not what history or the facts well, bear out. Now, when it comes to China in this investigation, like you said, if it can be verified, that's problematic. I'm waiting for when, and I'm not seeing that. Yeah, we should also point out that on the gun charges, the lion's share of those who face the exact gun charges are prosecuted, more than 90%. Moving on to politics now, Texas rep, former rep Will Hurd, is in the presidential race. Watch. Bunch of candidates, Morgan. I know Will Hurd very well. He's a good friend of mine. He's an incredibly talented and smart individual um, and was a fantastic member of Congress. Unfortunately for Will, it was going to be very hard to meet the threshold that the RNC has put forth to make the August debate. So listen, it's, you know, it's, it's a free country. Everybody can run. Going to be hard to make those debates, but I, I welcome mm -hmm. what I see is an incredibly diverse cast of people in our party running for president, uh, very different from what you're seeing from the Democratic Party, and I'm proud of that. Yeah, and lastly to you, um, uh, Byron, you know, the whole Joe Manchin thing, the possibility of him getting in, I'm not going to read this, but there are a lot of Democrats say it's a terrible idea. Your thoughts? Well, Democrats have been very, very angry about anything, Joe Manchin, uh, no labels, any effort uh, to mount a candidacy that might take some votes away from Joe Biden. That's clearly their number one concern, and it should be, uh, because Joe Biden didn't win by all that much in the key electoral states uh, in 2020. So I, I think you'll see them try to shoot down anything and anybody who threatens uh, President Biden's chances. About 15 seconds, Leslie. Joe Manchin getting in. Your thoughts? <laughs> well, Joe Manchin hasn't been a Democrat for a very long time. A. B. I don't think he's going to get into the game. Yep. Uh, C. Democrats are pretty much doing what Republicans do, which is they're going to throw stuff at whoever is going to be up against their guy or their candidate, if it is a gal, as we've had. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, that's nothing new. That's politics. Uh, thank you, panel. We appreciate it.